What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Autodesk Fusion 360 woodworking tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to create a simple box with different joints inside of Fusion 360. We can then take that box and create plans from it or really anything that we want. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to model out our wood box. And so to start off, we need to draw the profile of our first piece of wood on the front of our box. So we're going to go up here and click on create sketch to create a sketch and then we're going to click on this face in order to start drawing out this box. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to draw a line by tapping the L key and then clicking that's two and a quarter inches tall. So 2.25. I'm going to hit the enter key. Then I'm going to draw a line from here and it's going to be 11 and a half inches long. Then I'm going to use the rectangle tool in order to draw this out. So you can see how we were able to use this in order to create the profile of our board. So I'm going to click on finish sketch, click on the button for extrude, and I'm going to extrude this with a thickness of, we'll call it 3 eighths of an inch. So 3 eighths of an inch. And one thing I messed up right there when I did that is when you do that, you don't want to create a new body you want to create a new component. So I'm going to undo this and do this again. So I'm going to click on extrude and then under your operation, make sure to make this a component and give it a thickness of 3 eighths of an inch. So that way that's going to show up in your components list down here and we can start labeling these as we go. So we're going to call this front piece. I'm sure you'd be more precise with your wording than me, but I'm good with this. Um, and we'll call this 11 0.5 inches by 2.25 inches and name these whatever you want these to look like in your cut list because we're going to be able to generate a schedule of the objects inside of here um, when we take this to our plan view and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rough out the front face of or I'm going to rough out the joints on the corners here so the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to create a sketch click on this face and then what we're going to do is we're going to say that this is going to go down a quarter of an inch or just for uniformity's sake, let's say that this is going to go down three eighths of an inch. So we're going to draw a line down three eighths of an inch, then a line back three eighths of an inch. So that way our side pieces will fit nicely in this groove. And then I'm going to use the line tool again. I'm going to find this central point and I'm going to single click. Then I'm going to move my mouse up and I'm going to basically draw a line 0.375 divided by 2. Because we're going to start by drawing this up, we'll come over here and then we'll draw it down. So the way that we're going to do that is we'll come over here and we'll just draw a line that aligns with this point. So then we can do the same thing on the bottom. So we'll draw a line up 3 eighths of an inch back, and you can just inference back in this case, and then over here we need to do the same thing. So we're going to draw a line down 3 eighths divided by 2, a line back that aligns with this point, then a line right here. Basically what we've done, if we click on finish sketches, we've roughed out the size of our cuts right here. And now we can use the extrude tool and select both of these to remove the material. So we're just going to use the cut function in order to do that. And now what we want to do is we want to mirror this across. You could go in and draw this manually on the other side, but you've already done the work. So there's really no point to doing that again. What we can do instead is we can go to construct midplane, and I'm just going to click on this face. I'm going to rotate and I'm going to click on this face. And what that's going to do is that's going to draw a plane right in the middle of those two faces we selected. Then if we click on OK, we can come up here to create mirror. And under your pattern type, we want to select the option for features. And so the option for features is going to allow us to select these cuts. So you can see how these highlight when I mouse over them. And then use the mirror plane in order to copy those across or mirrored across our object to the other side. And we're going to click on OK. So you can see how that quickly allowed us to remove this material. So now what we want to do is we want to create our sideboards. So we're going to do the same thing. And notice that if this construction plane is distracting to you, you can turn it off by going to this little drop down and turning off the plane. But now we're going to click on Create Sketch. 
we're going to select this face, and we're just going to draw this whole thing out again. So I'm just going to draw the profile. And in this situation, I want this whole thing to have a width of five and a quarter. So I'm going to draw a line here to here, here to here, but then I'm also going to draw a line from this edge my full length. So this is going to be 5.25. And so you can see how what I'm doing is I'm just basically roughing out the size of this object. Just by drawing the profile in here, or just by drawing this profile in here with our measurements. So this is going to, we want to draw this until it aligns with that point. You can see how I'm just using inferencing in order to draw my joint. We're going to click on Finish Sketch, and somewhere in here I missed an edge, so I'm going to go back, right click on this, and click on Edit Sketch, and I think the one I missed, oh, I missed a point right here. And one thing that's kind of helpful sometimes is turning off this piece right here, that way you can kind of see what you missed. So I'm just going to draw an edge across here, there we go, and we'll close this in, we'll click on Finish Sketch, and then we just want to extrude this out by that same thickness as the other board. So we're just going to activate the extrude tool, click on this face, and extrude this across. And notice that this automatically goes into join mode. Well, you don't want this to go into join mode. You want to create a new component for your side piece. And you want the depth of it to be negative 3 divided by 8. So negative 3 eighths. So now, you can just go back and kind of double check to make sure that your board joint is fitting in here properly, which it looks like it is. Well, now what we want to do is we want to add a groove. So the groove is going to be where the wood piece is going to sit on the inside of this. So in order to do that, we just want to draw out the profile of the groove. So to do that, we're just going to create a sketch on this face. And we're just going to sketch that out. So I'm going to say that this is going to happen just above this point right here and we're going to say that the piece that we're going to put on the bottom to make up the base is going to be 3 16 of an inch thick. So that may be too thick for what we're doing here but I think it'll be fine. So I just drew this line right here and then I'm going to use the rectangle tool from that point to this point to give me kind of the profile of that. And so once we're done with this, we can just extrude that back using the extrude tool. So we can click on this face, then see how you can click and drag this and this will remove material? Well, I'm going to type in, we'll say negative, we'll call it an eighth of an inch. We'll call it an eighth of an inch recess on this side. Then we're going to do the exact same thing over here on this piece. So we'll just create a sketch over here. We'll say it's going to go up. 3 16 We'll use the rectangle tool in order to draw this in here. And that may actually need to go to right here. We'll click on finish sketch and then we'll just extrude this back. So I'm just going to click on this, we'll extrude it back, negative an eighth of an inch. And it looks like I've got a little bit of leftover material over there, so I'm just going to extrude this face back, and you may need to turn that sketch back on, but we're just going to extrude this back negative an eighth of an inch as well. And so now what we have is we have our front piece and our side piece. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure to label this side piece. So we'll just click in here, we'll call it side piece. And it was five and a quarter inches deep. So we'll call this five and a quarter. So now we need to add these to the other side of our box. And so one thing I don't want to do is I don't want to come back in and remodel this. We're really trying to avoid remodeling as much as possible. So we're just going to use the mirror tool again in order to create copies of these objects. So we're going to go back and we're going to turn on this construction plane. And we can go to create, mirror, and under pattern type we can select components. We can mirror this object along this plane. So you can see how what that'll do is that'll create an additional piece over here. And I'm going to click on OK. 
So you can see how this shows up in here and note that it says mirror. That's just letting you know that it's a mirrored copy of another object. But we're gonna do the same thing with this end piece. So we'll go to construct mid plane. We'll select a plane between this end and this end. We'll click on okay. Then we'll go to create mirror. We'll select our component and we'll select this mirror plane and click on okay. <laughs> and notice that when I created this end piece, I extruded out the wrong ends over here. So we're just gonna go back and we're gonna use a cool function in here in the timeline where we can edit something that we did. So I'm gonna go back in here, right click on this. I'm gonna click on edit sketch. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow me to adjust this sketch that we had in here. So I'm just going to draw a line across this face, draw a line across this face, I'll draw a line here and actually we can just draw a line all the way across this face right here and we're just going to trim out a couple of these edges so you can see how when I trim out these edges these don't have faces in here anymore well now if I click on finish sketch we can also edit this extrusion that we did so we can click on edit feature and you can see how basically what this is allowing us to do is this is allowing us to go back in time. So it's allowing us to fix something that we did before. So what I'm doing is I'm editing that extrusion and you can see how I had this profile selected. Well, all I have to do is just select this face and this face in order to add those to this object. And then we can click on okay. You can see how what that did is that actually adjusted the piece way back in our timeline and now our edges work properly. So you can see how on this corner, this now works okay. And so one other thing I'm going to do, and then we're gonna call it good because I don't want this video to get super long. I'm gonna turn these construction planes off. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come in here and I'm gonna draw out my wood piece that's gonna fit in the bottom here. And we may want to also, let's see, I'm gonna turn off this side piece. We want to take this edge and we want to extrude it back negative an eighth of an inch in order to remove the material right here so that we have our full groove. And notice that when, notice that we're going to have to make that change over here as well. So I'm just going to extrude this back negative one eighth of an inch. We're going to call that good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this wood piece that goes on the base. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to create a sketch but I'm gonna do it by clicking on this face. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to draw a sketch on that plane, and I can kind of rotate down until I can see it. I'm just gonna use the rectangle tool in order to draw my sketch from this corner. So right here, I'm gonna rotate around, and I'm gonna find this corner. So that allows me to draw a sketch on the plane where this little recess is. So we're gonna click on finish sketch. We're gonna extrude this up into a new component. And remember, I think we made our sheet 3 16 of an inch. So we'll just extrude this up 3 16 of an inch. And then you can call that something like your base piece. And if you want to, you can turn these off and then just do a quick inspection in order to see the width. So you can see how that piece is 11 inches. Then we're gonna close this, then we'll open it again. You can see how this one is 4.625 inches. So we can just call this wood base, 3 16 by 11 by 4.625 inches. So now when we report these out later, this will give us a list of these objects. So we're gonna call this good for our wood right now. One thing that I do wanna do is I wanna add some materials to it. So in order to do that, I'm gonna type the S key to search and I'm gonna type in material. And we're just gonna click on physical material. What that's gonna do is that's gonna pop up the option to add some materials to this. So in this situation, let's go ahead and say this is going to be cherry. Well, you can see how I can actually drag 
the cherry material onto each one of these objects. So this is actually shows up as a wood box. I think by default, it's like steel or something like that. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna call this good. There are other things that you could add to this, but for right now, I think this should give you a pretty good idea of how you could model out a box like this. So now we wanna create a plan. So before we create our plan, what we wanna do is we wanna save this. So we're just gonna go up here, do a file, save, and save your model. So once you've saved your model, what you can do is you can click on this button right here and go down to drawing and click on from design. So when you do that, it's going to ask you for the reference. And depending on what size you want your sheet to be, you can do whatever you want with this. I'll leave this at 11 by 17. You may go to letter depending on what your printer looks like, but we're gonna click on okay. That's gonna create a drawing from our object. So when it does that, what it's gonna do is it's gonna pop up a little sheet and you're gonna need to click in order to set your first object. So we're just gonna click right here in order to set that. And we're gonna go ahead and you're gonna notice there's some stuff over here for your drawing view. I'm gonna set my orientation to top. That's gonna let me set a top view of my box. And I'm gonna go ahead and set my scale to maybe like, you could even set it to one to one, but that gets kind of big. Um, so we'll set it to one to two for right now. And we're gonna click on okay. And so what that did is that allowed us to add a plan view of our box in here. And so from there, there's a lot of different things that you can do. You can single click on this in order to move this around. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add a couple dimensions. So we're just gonna click on dimension and we're gonna add a dimension from this point to this point and we're gonna click. We're gonna do that again from here to here and from here to here. And so let's say you wanted to add another view with just one of your, or let's say you wanted to add a front view. You could click in here and you could either add a projected view. So what a projected view would do is it would use this view in order to project a front view. So if I was to click on that, it would ask me for a parent view, which would be this one. Then I could just move my mouse and click again in order to place a view right here. And I could set another one right here. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna give you like a plan view and an orthographic view as well. And so then if you move this diagonally, this will create kind of a 3D view of your box. But for now, I'm just gonna hit enter and that's giving me my front view and my side view of my box. And depending on how you want this to look, you can definitely double click on this and adjust this so that it goes to visible edges or shaded with your wood material, whatever you want that to do. And you know what I might do is I might break this off into another video where we talk about more options about our wood box. So for right now, I'm gonna wrap this one up and then in the future, we'll talk a little bit more about how to kind of create our plans and maybe create some different kinds of views inside of the plans in Fusion 360. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Have you been modeling stuff like this in Fusion 360? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below if you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion 360 content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.